Oluchi Olandi has become a pan-African brand as time has progressed. Um, she started off as being the face of Africa, I mean, when she was barely 17 years old. And it's been a very interesting, sensational story from there as her career just skyrocketed. And I mean, she's on the runways of pa Paris, uh, Fashion Week, what have you, New York, Johannesburg. And um, she's also been, uh, she's shown some very strong entrepreneurial traits as time went on as well. And that's what makes her story very dynamic. So you might have this supermodel that just came out of Nigeria and she's blazing the trail internationally, but she also has a very strong business focus and um, it's something we wanted to share with our readers. Yeah, I got into Face of Africa through this family friend as a fashion designer. Um, and she said to me, you know what, I think you, you'll be perfect for this modeling competition. I heard about it in the radio. I want to take you, I want to take you. I was like, okay, let's go. So I went with her and, and my life just um, turned 360. What stood out for me is Oluchi's charisma. She is almost um, the most down-to-earth person. <laughs> um, my expectations were completely reversed when I met her. She came in with such a charm. Um, she's absolutely lovely. And uh, she has a very interesting story as well, and that, that translated in the interview. I, I don't feel like my childhood is different yes. from any other a typical Nigerian right. childhood. Obviously, I grew up in the mainland yes. and it was the normal routine, mm -hmm. just school, home, home, school, yes. church. Sometimes I play with the boys. I'm a bit yes. of a tomboy when I was growing up, maybe because of my height, I don't yes. know. But I played on the street a lot, right. on the street of, of Lagos, yes. you know. Were you ever like, I mean, you, of course you were talking, I, 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 I was imagine. very, <laughs> I would, actually I was normal until yeah. I was 15 years old. Okay. So from 15 to 17, yeah. I don't know what happened. I yeah. just woke up one day and my legs were just too long for my body, <laughs> you know? And then yeah, that's how it happened. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Were you close, do you have any memories that stand out from your childhood of what you enjoyed about? I think yeah. some that I, I really like that if I could go back, I haven't actually been back to the streets where I grew up, but if I could just, um, I have memories of me playing ping pong with boys, guys, you know, I'm very good at ping pong. Now I play with my two boys, but my, my I remember just playing ping pong on the street of Lagos. And, you know, my, my parents were not entrepreneurs. They were not business people at all. My mother was a, a nurse. She worked in the hospital for 22 years. My father was a civil servant. But it, <laughs> I was the business person in the house, you know. So I remember selling at a much younger age, but it was more my idea. It wasn't my parents saying, go do this. It was more my initiative. Yeah. What were you saying? How can, how can we bring more income, income to the family? Okay. So I'm sure it's not yeah. different from most uh, like Nigerian. Yeah. And, and I mean, at that point, let's say maybe when you're 15, 17, what was your dream? What did you want to be in life at that point? I wanted to work in a bank. Okay, so you wanted to be a banker. <laughs> <laughs> the power careers. <laughs> I okay. To work okay. In a bank, okay. You know? Because you had a thing for finance, or you just thought it was no, a glamorous career? I just or? thought it was glamorous. Okay. I liked the way women wear suits, and they, you know, I wanted to work in the bank okay. or become a, a hair hostess. Oh, but okay. that was you I just felt like that. <laughs> I just felt that would never happen because I I don't travel. I, I yeah. didn't travel at that yeah. age. But um, banking was the closest yeah. to it. But I had a family friend that was a, um, um, a, a, what do you call it? I wouldn't say she was a designer, but yeah. she, 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 she was a designer, yeah. Nigerian definition of designer. Yeah. And she was um, a mentor to me. I was almost like um, an adult friend that I had at that yeah. time. So I would spend most of my evenings with her after school. Yeah. And, and she just took me in. She was a designer. She made clothes for people. Yeah. So I spent most of my evening days with her. Did you have an interest in what she was doing? 
Um, you, were you fascinated I just, by it? I was or? just fascinated with what she was doing. I was just, yeah. just her as a person yeah. and the fact that she took me in yeah. Yeah. as a sister. Right. So she, she was just, just an elder friend I had okay. at that time. And she took me to the competition that I went to. Okay. Which is what we want to get to now. Uh -huh. Did you get into Face of Africa? How, yeah. How are you? Yeah, I got into Face of Africa through this family friend as a fashion designer. Um, and she said to me, you know what, I think you will be perfect for this modeling competition. I heard about it in the radio. I want to take you. I want to take you. I was like, okay, let's go. So I went with her and, and my life just um, turned 360. The shoot was very interesting. She came in with a lot of energy. You almost don't have to direct a supermodel. She knows exactly what, what to do. Uh, we turned out, it turned out to be a very uh, interesting day. Uh, she had a lot of fun and the pictures uh, look really gorgeous. So I'm sure everybody will enjoy looking at those as well. First person singular, I was just focused on myself. Oh my God, I'm so excited. This is such an amazing opportunity for me, 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 me. Just 100% focused on myself. Even though my parents said to me, oh, we don't think you should go. We've heard all sorts of things about modeling and fashion. This might not be for you. Um, even though at that time I was just focused on myself, you know, many years down the line, looking back, you know, I'm forever more grateful to a corporate corporation like Mnet that gave a, a, some sort of social response you know, responsibility yeah. to young adult women, which I feel like the continent doesn't do enough for our women. You know, stuff that I just targeted towards empowering our young adult women. You know, they don't do enough of that. So then it was just, oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. This is amazing. But today I was like, that was such a good thing yeah. for me and for many other girls that were given the opportunity. Yeah. and. That, as the years goes by, that it's my driving um, force to want to, how can I give back? What can I do to, and I don't even think I've done anything. You know, me bringing um, Africa's Next Stop model to the continent, um, I, it's not challenging enough. So I wake up every day punching myself. I'm my own worst biggest critic. So despite everything that has happened in my life, I don't feel like I've done anything. Um, Africa's Next Stop Model, for instance, how, what was the process for you? What, how did you get into that? It was a personal drive, and then it wasn't just about me, because I was stepping out of myself and thinking of the fashion industry. I saw what the competition did, you know, for Tyra and for the Western countries. And I said to myself, this will be really good for the continent. In the last 10 years, I've been modeling for, for about 13 years now. And I've seen the way the fashion industry on the continent has really grown. You know, I was there when they cut the, the, the ribbon for Cape Town Fashion Week. And they've been consistent. They've had Johannesburg Fashion Week. Now we have Lagos Fashion Week and Design. The industry is really growing. I like that she is still very well connected with her African roots. She um, did mention quite a number of times that she might not live in Nigeria, but she feels as though she cannot be disconnected from, from where she comes from. A lot of people celebrate the, the West and you don't celebrate where you come from more. And uh, she urges more indigents of the continent to represent their homes a bit more. Um, don't give the West too much of a pat on the back. Also celebrate your successes on ground. and. Uh, where we go in as Africans, and um, I like that vision about her. I was, like I was saying earlier, I felt like the general masses doesn't, they don't really have an insight to what the fashion industry is like. They have very minimum understanding of what goes on, that it's about creativity, and, and there's a whole, you know, the global fashion industry is like billions and billions of dollars, and it gives amazing job opportunity to women and, and young, young adult women, and I felt like, if I could pull this off for the continent, it does not only give opportunity to other women to either find their voices or to some sort of have hope that, okay, I can go in this direction. Maybe not necessarily become a model, maybe I could become a makeup artist, maybe I could become a stylist, maybe I could, I could become a hairstylist, maybe I could be an art director, a photographer, creative director. I mean, there's a whole, um, 
creative opportunity for women. And it, it, it we just sort of help the industry to grow. And we've done the right things over the last many few years where we've had consistent fashion week, fashion weeks and we've had magazines, you know, in South Africa. I always talk a lot about South Africa because they've been more structured and they've been more consistent than any other country on the continent. You know, they have Cosmopolitan, True Love, um, Elle magazine, Glamour, and Forbes, and, and Vanity Fair, and it's growing and it's growing. And I said to myself, we need to take this to television and reach out to the mainstream market so people can understand that the, the, the industry is not just what it, you know, what they think it is. And, you know, there's a whole another life behind it that people need to be educated about. And that was my driving force for Africa's Next Top Model. And, you know, we worked really hard to make it happen. We, it was just a small, tiny uh, team of people and myself. We worked day and night to pull it off. And I felt like it was it was a tremendous success. Um, Oluchi has started. I mean, she had started off with her own model modeling agency, where she actually went out and sourced um, Africa's African supermodels and um, gave them careers to start with. I mean, this is a woman who is um, very, very um, happy and proud and hasn't forgotten how she got to where she is as well. And she mentioned quite a number of times the Mnet Face of Africa competition that opened doors for her, and she in that same light, wants to pave the way for young aspiring models. So that was one of it. And of course, there's also the African uh, Africa's Next Top Model, which she's the executive producer of. She's the host, she's the chief judge. Um, it's something that she thought would work very well on the continent. It's been a sensation and they're working on the next, um, the very next cycle very soon. And um, I'm sure that uh, that will also be quite a success.